What's going on my friends, Sean Pierce Johnson here, and today I'm going to show you guys my new bass. So if you're a guitar player like I am that came of age between that late 90s, early 2000s time period, you may or may not have been listening to new metal. I know I was. It's really the music that got me into the idea of playing guitar. And along with those guys who were plugging their PRS Custom 24s into dual rectifiers, there were bass players in those bands playing Warwick basses. So a lot of the tones that I associate with the music that got me into playing guitar, the bass tones were all produced by Warwick, a very cool, big, detailed sound that just really fit the time and really fit the music. Now, over the course of the last couple of years, from the time I went to GitCon 2017, through some of the demos that we've seen of the Framus guitars, I have established a relationship with the cats at Warwick. And lo and behold, I when I reached out to them and said, hey, I really want to try one of these basses. I want to see if this is going to be something that I could work into my normal arsenal of instruments because quite frankly, I'm gonna be recording quite a bit of bass over the course of this summer. And the Rock Bass Corvette S, I believe, is what I hold in my hand right now. Uh, it arrived and I've been spending the better part of the last few months really getting to know it, getting comfortable with it. And I have just decided that it is probably one of the best basses that I have ever put my hands on. It fits me and the style of music that I need to record and can even do a lot of chameleon things that will allow me to explore this instrument more than I have been able to in the past with some of the basses that I just had lying around. So I'll give you guys a couple ideas of what the specs are, but kind of give you more of an idea of why a bass. Why should a guitarist acquire a bass? Why should I, personally, being a guy who predominantly demos guitar gear, have a bass sitting around? So let's talk about some of the specs and what's kind of cool about this bass. Now, when we look at this bass at face value, it definitely looks like it's gonna fit a jazz bass vibe. And you would be right, but there are certain things that Warwick does to this bass that make it uniquely their own. So let's get right down to the specs. We have an alder body in a very cool faded blue denim kind of finish, and it's a matte finish, so it doesn't quite have the glare, and it's nice and smooth on your arms so that when you sweat, it's not gonna you know, get all sticky. Bolted to the body with four bolts, we have a five piece neck of maple walnut, maple walnut, maple. And what I love about the way that the neck is bolted to the body is that the body and the neck have these grommets or, you know, steel washer kind of things or metal washers. I don't know what kind of metal they are, but they're impregnated, that's the best word I have right now, into the body. And the screws go through those metal appointments. There we go, we'll just call them appointments. And the, I feel like it really helps with the contact, really helps the stability of the neck and the body so that not only do they stay together better, I feel like it also contributes to the overall resonance of the instrument. On top of the maple neck, we have a 24 fret wenge, wenge, however you pronounce it, uh, fingerboard, and it's 34 inches in scale length. Length. Long scale length, lots of frets, lots of notes to be played, but I feel like there's some other things that it can contribute to, but we'll get into the weeds with that later. Now at the headstock, four strings obviously, two tuners on each side, but what was really cool about the way that the tuners are oriented, it's a small thing, but I feel like it's a comfort thing, is the way that they ever so slightly angle the tuners towards you, the player. So you're not having to reach a whole long way while you're tuning your instrument. It's nice and comfortable, as you can see. There's a lot of comfort throughout this instrument. Now the way the neck feels, it definitely has your classic jazz kind of vibe to it, where the neck is just a little bit thinner 
as far as width wise at the lower frets and then as you work your way up it starts to get just a little bit wider so that your thumb has a nice place to anchor itself when it comes to playing on the upper frets. What also is great is that as you work your way up the neck, they've kind of carved out this little pocket right here for your hand to sort of move into. The bridge is basically a stop bar tunematic style bridge, except instead of stringing the string through the stop bar, we have a little cutout right here on the bridge where the ball end goes into, and it just kind of rests in this recessed cavity on the base. You go up with a slight angle and go right over an individual saddle for each string. And it is intonatable. You can go sharp, you can go flat, you can raise and lower the height of the string here at the bridge so that you are in tune open, 12 and probably even 24. But the thing that really caught me off guard when I got the bass the first time was the nut. Didn't look like anything that I had really seen before. And since I hadn't really gotten to play many Warwick basses over the years, I was not aware of. This is a height adjustable nut that you can adjust the height of the lower strings and the higher strings so that you can really find the action here at the lower part of the neck and here at the higher part of the neck to not only get the intonation right, but also the feel, the fret buzz, making sure that you can play this bass comfortably and that it sounds as best as you possibly can. Now we come to the electronics, which to me are always what help define the Warwick sound. These are the MEC jazz bass style pickups, which I have heard for years, and they sound great. But one thing that's different about this bass from some of the other basses I've had in the past is that it's active. So not only do I have to worry about batteries in this bass, but there's a whole host of other things that I can do with it that I wasn't able to do with previous basses that I've had. We have four knobs on the bass. This one right here, the first one in line, that's our overall master volume. Nice. Second knob, this is instead of being like a three-way rotary selector for bridge, both, and neck, it's actually a blend control so that you can go ahead and dial all the way to the bridge pickup. Then there's a center detent with a little click to it. That's where you know you have your 50-50 blend of bridge and neck. And then, boom, go to full on neck and get any kind of blend in between those three sounds that your heart might desire. Even further than that, we have two band active EQ so we can boost and cut treble and bass. It comes in very handy when you're wanting to dial in something maybe a little bit more vintage or maybe a little bit more modern. Well, now that we've talked about all the specs of the instrument, and there are a lot of them, I think the most important thing is how it sounds and how it feels. Now, of course, I'm not the greatest bass player in the world, so don't expect the most amazing performance out of me. I'm trying to get better as a bass player, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted a great bass. And if you'd like to see a little bit of that in some future videos, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up to let me know your interest. Um, let's go ahead and hear some of the sound samples. We're gonna go ahead and check out the different pickup sounds individually. I'll sweep the knobs on the EQ, and then I'll show you guys a couple different sounds that I've been able to conjure up and enjoy with this particular bass. And then we'll bring it back around and talk about my overall thoughts. <laughs>
Now, I don't know how you guys in my normally guitar-oriented audience feel about hearing those sounds. I don't know if you like them or dislike them. All I know is that what I've been able to accomplish with this bass tone-wise, both plugged into my amp and DI, is much greater than I've ever been able to get out of any other bass I've ever had in my collection. I feel like you can get that really cool Jocko sound out of the bridge pickup, but you can just as easily take the neck pickup and turn it into something that sounds somewhat similar to a P bass. You can then get the classic jazz bass sound with the in-between for your slapping and popping, which I'm still working on, but the way that I can get this really cool, aggressive, modern rock tone out of it, that just seals the deal for me. So as the summer goes on, I will be tracking some tracks for my band, Cockeyed Optimist, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Uh, this summer, I'm gonna need it, and I'm going to have a great time doing it, as well as just becoming a better bass player. I feel like overall, this bass is the most comfortable I've ever played. I feel like when I pick it up, I can actually play it and it's actually working with me and not against me. Now my fingers are normally used to the weight and the pressure for guitar strings, not bass strings, but even as I start practicing and spend some time with it, I'm getting that feel for it and I'm not feeling that fatigue of heavy strings. It definitely is a bass that I'm just finding myself sitting on the couch and just plucking away at mindlessly. All in all, I guess I can say, you get a lot of bass for your money, and I am really happy to have this in the arsenal, and I look forward to becoming a better bass player because of it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at the Warwick Rock Bass Corvette. There's gonna be a few more things coming on the channel this year that will feature this bass, and I hope you'll join me for those soon. And if you haven't done so already, please do click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications by hitting the bell and go join me over on Patreon for more exclusive content and early access videos. Thanks for joining me for this quick little video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, my friends, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson, and I wish you all out there, guitar or bass, great tone and happy stomping. Cheers, friends.